it's going to be a QuickBooks OFX uh, data file. And you can see here it says it's, it's, it's a dot uh, QBO. So that is going to be that. Now, if I open this up, I can't really just open it and look at the data or change the data before I upload it into QuickBooks. So the, the other format that you can open something in is a CSV file which if you have Excel will typically default to opening with Excel, but it's not exactly an Excel file. So if I right click on this one, for example, same data, but I downloaded it as a comma slice CSV file. So if I look at the properties of that one, you can see it's a CSV type of file. So if I close that up, let's just look at the data in here just to think about what kind of stuff is being uploaded into the system and what needs to be done to it in order to populate it and, and pull it in to be useful to our accounting system. So this is this is all the data that you have. It's ver quite similar to what we looked at when we thought when we visualized it as what's on the bank statement. But of course, it's now populated in such a way that it's easily uploadable uh, into the system. So clearly, you've got a date range, a date. That's what they have, the date of the transaction. This isn't the date the transaction took place necessarily. It's the date that it clears the bank. So if it was a check, there could be a big difference between the date you wrote the check and the date it cleared. If they're electronic transfers, it should be quite close. And then you've got increases and decreases, which might be populated in one or two columns. But if it's in one column, obviously positive numbers increase, negative, and then the decrease. And then in essence, you have the memo or the, the bank text here. In the bank text, oftentimes we have stuff that can indicate to us whether or not or give us the information necessary to populate a customer or vendor, but that customer or vendor is not being populated by the system. It's just this bank jargon stuff that you can pull from to then add the customer or vendor. So to pull this from bank feed limbo, once this gets pulled into the system, it's going to be pulled into bank feed limbo because it doesn't have the information. That's, that's going to be the holding ground that I call it because it doesn't have the information to pull it in to actually be useful to the end result creation of the financial statement or double check the data input of the financial statement, helping us with the reconciliation because we're at least going to have to add whether or not it matches to a transaction we already input or the account that it needs to be applied to. And then we, we don't necessarily have to, but we really generally want to add the customer and the vendor information which we can typically get from the memo now remember all this stuff that's in in the memo or the bank kind of jargon area it is only there if you have an electronic transfer so if you're doing electronic transfers that's the ideal kind of situation for the bank feeds because then you've got this added information to help you determine the account the customer and the vendor if you just have cash that you're depositing or taking out then all you're going to have is the date and the dollar amount. That's not going to give you the information you really need, even through the bank feeds to, to really finalize the transaction oftentimes, unless all your transactions are uniform. Uh, and if you do, if you write checks, then the checks are, are can be great because you might have the canceled checks, but that information is not going to show up in the memo in the same way. You're going to have to go and check uh, the canceled check to get uh, that added type of information as well. So those are just a couple things to keep in mind. Now, note that if I did anything to this file, like if I if I format this file differently or 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 uh, like I, I make it I put some gr some yellow around this or I do something to it and then I tried to save it, if I save this and then and then close it, then when I open it back up, it's likely that that's not that's not actually going to be there anymore because it's going to it's not going to save the formatting. I won't actually do it but it's not going to save the formatting of it because this is an Excel formatting thing. And this file is not actually an Excel file. It's a CSV file. So just be aware of that. Also, you could say, Hey, look, I want to just practice with QuickBooks. Why don't I make my own transactions? I don't need to, I don't even need to download it from the bank. I'm just going to add the date field, the, the amounts, and then I'm going to add a field for the memo, which will mirror like your vendors and your customers, which are typically somewhere in the bank jargon. And you could totally, you can totally do that. But then when you save the Excel file, you're going to have to go to file up top, save as and browse. And then you want to save it as not an Excel file, 
but a .csv file. So save it as a .csv file. You might be able to upload an Excel file, but it, I don't think that was one of the recommended types. But you could just down, you could just do it as a CSV file from Excel, and you can make your own data set then, and you can make your own practice problem to play with and upload the information uh, into the system. I'm trying to use actual kind of kind of mock data from a bank because then you get to see all the kind of weird stuff that happens in the memo if it's an electronic kind of transfer uh, situation. So that's going to be the general idea. So now we're, we're going to imagine that we have our data file on our, our desktop at this point in time. And so next time we'll go in and we'll actually upload the data file into the system, which is the, one of two methods of getting the information into the system, connecting directly, which automatic, automatically updates going forward or uploading it 